Hey everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Um, try to do a new introduction here. And uh, so welcome to uh, today's episode. So um, first of all, a little bit of, I guess, announcement of some sorts. So the owners don't know yet of my day job, though they're about to know a little bit later today, I'm sure. But uh, today is my last day of the day job. So um, I guess for now, Leet Wine is my job. So uh, you'll see over here on the right, besides the donation buttons that I keep bugging you guys about, they're starting to, they're starting to show some, there are some ads starting to show up. Um, right now, though hopefully there'll be more, I know I've got um, a thing for DeLong wine. Uh, they have like a elemental chart of varietals, really cool. Um, they've got, uh, I've also got some Adagio teas because they're like the in thing, they, they're like the cool thing, whatever. I know that Alex and uh, Kevin hawk that all the time on Dignation. There's a little plug for Dignation. Um, so I figured, why not? And then I think I've got uh, another ad for, um, oh, I don't, uh, uh, drink. Oh, I can't remember the name of the place. Oh, hold on. It's a, uh, it's another, it's another place. They, they specialize in getting uh, wines for uh, like 10 bucks or less, which is kind of the focus of this podcast. So drink, drink up for less. That's it. Drink up for less. So uh, we got those going on. Uh, you'll also notice that um, there should be a new link up on the top. It says library. Uh, that's basically all the books that I've read in my studies for being a sommelier. So, uh, and the links to Amazon to buy those. So, of course, that's the affiliate program and all that. So hit those, hit those up. And um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's go and get started with the first wine. Um, that was the big announcement, by the way, that I kind of hinted to on Twitter, uh, that, uh, I was going to be quitting effective today. Uh, my GM quit. I was waiting for him, for him to do that. And I'm waiting for the owner to call. I kind of hope he calls during the podcast. I won't answer the phone, I'll, but I kind of hope he calls during the podcast. So, um, all right, so let's get right into the very first one. I'm real excited about this one. Um, just because, you know, I did some little research. So let's see. And, and I know... Before anyone says, I know when I put the bottle up closer to the camera, a lot of times you can't read the things. I try and experiment with the with the lighting. I do, you know, basically I'm using outdoor lighting through the window, so I, I don't have as much hitting me, so hopefully you can read these labels better. Anyway, so the, today's wine is Gazella uh, Vino Verde. All right, so a few things about this. Uh, Darn it, I didn't get the price that we paid for this at World Market. Um, I'm going to just go off the top of my head. It was either $6.99 or $7.99. I'll, I'll find it when I put it on the lower third. I'll have the correct price in the lower third. But um, So anyway, the Gazella Vino Verde, um, it's a non-vintage. There's no vintage on here. So um, most, of the wines, most wines have a vintage, but for some reason they don't, put a, they, they don't vintage this one. Um, so... But I'll, I'll, basically, what that means is they can take wines from other vintages. So they may have they may have some wines in here from 2005, 2006, 2007, um, and for whatever reason they didn't they didn't do a single vintage. Don't know why, but uh, but that gives them a little flexibility and not having to worry about you know if one vintage was bad, uh, one vintage was exceptional. They can kind of mix the two and make an okay an okay wine. So first of all, but Vino Verde. Um, it's can be made of, it's not a, that Vino Verde is not a varietal. It's, it's a really just kind of an area of Portugal. And, uh, the, that area is in northwest, north, northwest corner of the country. Uh, of, you know, as far as the United States is concerned, think of it as like Washington State, because it's, that's about how it looks like in the country. And they can use a bunch of different varietals, um, between red and white. And, uh, there's no one, necessarily one varietal in there. And uh, this one, let's see, according to a website I, I did some research on, this particular bottle is supposed to be a combination of Lorario, uh, I probably just messed that one up, Trajadura, Azal, and then uh, they listed the other varietal as Penaderna, which is also known as Orinto, or Orinto. You can also have the other, the other varietals, white varietals are commonly used in Vino Verde, are Aveso and, uh, well, yeah, and Aveso. But you can have up to 19 white 
wine, white varietals in a white Vino Verde. They also make reds, and I don't have all the, um, I didn't like take down all the uh, varietals, but you can have up to 17 of those varietals. So a little, little bit of trivia there for you. So let's go ahead and check out the wine. First of all, um, screw top. I love screw tops. And uh, when I open the wine, and you can see it, look at that. You see that? This is not a sparkling wine. You can't really, you probably can't see the, the bubbles in there. But when I opened it, um, you could tell it was like a little bit of carbonation. It, you could hear like a little, just got that again, something like that when you open up the screw top. Um, and you can see it's, it's, you know, got a little bit of bubbly action. You know, uh, it's, it's not a, um, it's not a um, sparkling wine again. It's, but uh, the way, the way they make the wine, they have, they add a little carbonation, I guess. So. Uh, in the, my research, it was says like they have some type of the pressure in there is not quite um, enough to call a semi-sparkling wine. So, um, so look at that. That's kind of neat. And I don't remember the other Vino Verdes I've had doing this, but I don't have it very often. So, um, but that's pretty cool. So let's uh, let's go ahead and um, see what we got here on the nose. So, um, you know, I feel I can smell the, the, the fizz in there. Uh, not that it's a champagne smell, but, uh, you know, I guess kind of lemon, lemony, maybe lemon peel, um, like citrus in that, in that aspect, uh, smell to it. I've also had the bottle over about two hours. I planned a little bit ahead this time. So yeah, I would say just basic citrus, maybe a little bit of lemon, lemon zest in there. Let's check it out. Hmm. Bitter. Really bitter, but I don't know if that's the wine. That might be just. We'll try again. Okay, it's not as bitter as, it, as the first try. Um, and that's really just probably because, you know, I actually just finished brushing my teeth. Well, not just, but, um, so I might be getting that toothpaste, you know, that the lap thing. Okay, so we got some better, better flavors coming through now. Um, definitely the citrusy stuff. I mean, some of that bitterness, it, it, it's kind of like a bit into, like a lemon peel. So I guess I'm getting that kind of astringency. Uh, so it, it's probably mostly the wine. Um. I'm getting really pretty much that, but but it's it feels like it's developing more. Yeah, I get that like you bit into the skin uh, astringency, so maybe that kind of lemoniness. Um, it's got decent acid to it. Um, so, you know, I think you, it'll cut through. If this was a little bit chilled, since this is room temperature, if it was chilled, I think it'd be really a, a more refreshing wine. You, you get that, I mean, you still get that bubbly action in your mouth, so you feel like the bubbles are in there. So that's kind of neat. Um, not, the, not enough of the bubbles like, you know, when people say like the, the champagne tickles their nose type of thing. You don't get that much. But um, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty decent wine. I'm, I'm actually pretty pleased with it. And like I said, I don't remember what the price was. I'm assuming it was around seven dollars. But um, a few, another thing about about Vino Verdes in general is that they have low alcohol. Like this alcohol was, I think, nine percent. It's nine percent on the alcohol. So it's not something that's gonna, you know, you, you could drink a couple glasses. You're not gonna get too loopy. Um, it's really easy drinking. I do I do like it. Um, score wise, I'm gonna say, even though I keep saying I like it. 
I don't love it. So I'm going to be a little more specific on scores. I, I would say I'd probably score it 82-ish, 82, 83. Um, like I said, it's not, it's not bad. Um, it's pretty good. Um, I mean, I don't want to score everything 80 and 85 because then it'll sound like I'm just a broken record. But um, I would say probably an 80, maybe 83. Uh, however, I think I'm going to be finishing off the bottle today in a little celebration. So, um, so yeah, now, you, like I said, with the website, you, I'm starting to do some changes. I'm starting to get some advertising in there to try to make this more of a money-making venture. Um, the library, the, again, that is intended to, uh, initially it's the books that I've read in my quest for doing so many stuff. What else are we going to do with the website? Uh, well, the links you can't see, but, but I've started working on is something called sommelier, I think I'm going to call it sommelier school. Um, not that I'm a sommelier, I haven't taken the test, but that part of the website is going to be something where we'll kind of have, like this, is a trip, well, a journey that we're going to take together in, uh, for me, relearning and restudying some of the stuff for taking the sommelier test. Um, most likely, I won't be taking this test until 2010. Um, a lot of it is just, you know, for for financial reasons, it's a $495 test. Now, if any one of you want to uh, sponsor that trip, uh, because there's nowhere in Texas that's offering it for the rest of the year, or actually any point this year, at least not the, at least not the introductory exam. There's a certified exam in Houston in October, but they're not doing the introductory exam. So um, if you want to sponsor the trip, hit me up on email. Um, or on Twitter. Speaking of that, also to the right, you should have uh, my my links, my social networking links, at least the main, the two main ones for for Elite Wine. I've got Twitter and I've got a Facebook fan page, uh, and also a regular Facebook page. I'm still trying to figure that one out, but uh, the fan the fan page and Twitter. So I'm always on Twitter, so you're always able to contact me at one three three seven wine. So at thirteen thirty seven wine Elite Wine. Um, what else we got? Uh, so yeah, the the uh, sommelier school. Hopefully, I'll have that up and running by next week with the first lesson. Uh, we'll just start with some basic stuff. I'll be using like my reference materials. Uh, heavily relying on as far as like you know the I guess the syllabus. Heavily heavily relying on wine for um, wine for dummies, and then um, uh, probably also uh, the Windows on the World. Uh, wine course. I mean, I've got a bunch of books, so I'll go through where I want to start off. You'll start off with the easy stuff. I'll also, the, to the right, you'll see a thing that says links. Now that, uh, for right now, is just some, some wine resources links. You click that, another page opens up, and some of those are like, you know, links to uh, Whip Magazine websites or just regular reference websites. Uh, a couple, um, uh, I've got a Wine Library TV you know, a little plug for Gary. By the way, Gary, congratulations on, on the new baby girl. Um, let's see, what else? I think that's going to be it for today's episode. Haven't figured out what I'm going to do for tomorrow. Um, but now that I don't work, I don't have to do multiple ones in one day. I may do another one later today, but it'll be up tomorrow. Uh, outside of that, friend me up. Contact me. Um, if, you need, if you need any advice or help or you have any questions or you have suggestions, I've got the comments down below. Uh, oh, yeah. Some guy was being a role, smart ass, um, about the spit bucket. Yeah, it's a Christmassy thing. It was the um, uh, ginger ginger snaps bucket. It's the closest thing I had to a spit bucket, and it's colorful and it kind of went with everything. And so we're gonna use that for now because I don't really have anything else to use. Um, and that's about it. I actually got a phone call coming. That I'm gonna take. Uh, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you again tomorrow.